the difference and then you finish. Thank you. And thanks to the company again for giving me the opportunity for talks. Um, this is my, this is John work with professors Piara, Lucy Hazard, and Aidy Kim. Yeah, see, Professor here, Professor Susie Heron here, and Aidy is not here. And first, let's have a, a recall of the history. We will have in the last decade, the level test library was introduced as an active version of a graph C side verse, and in particular, Queen's Creek Adverse. And later, the Queen's Creek Adverse of, Queen Pass of uh, K graphs were introduced as an active version of a higher rank graph C side verse. Around 2010, a uh, stack adverbs were introduced as the uh, adverb version of a group white cyst adverbs. And yesterday, Professor Clark C showed that level pass adverbs is uh, uh, level pass adverbs can be real, uh, realized as sample adverbs. And also, Professor Clark and uh, uh, her students mm -hmm. they, they realize. Kumi uh, has the adverse of a bottomly aligned key graphs as stem adverse. So we know that stem adverse includes this Kumi has the adverse and a certain Kumi has the adverse and the level has the adverse. All these adverse have been attracting significant attention with particular interest in whether key theory can be used to classify level pass adverbs. So today, um, okay, we have uh, we have a reduction in sister adverbs. So giving us a certain group point D, we have a school product of group point D times gamma. Uh, we will we will introduce this school product later. So in this uh, Reynolds book, we have a result that this. This side row of the screw product group point is a cross product. So in spite by this readout, so in this side we are we want we ask you what is the relationship between the sample adverbs? This is the sample adverb of the screw product, and this is the sample adverb of the group point So of course we, we consider the ample host of group point yeah, we found that this uh, sample adverb of the school product is graded as a morphic to a natural generalization of a homogamous mass product. So in this paper, the authors they introduced a, a mass product of a unitary, but here we need a generalization because we know that sample adverb uh, has local units, but sometimes we do not have unit. Oh, here's our outline. We Study the graded representations of sample adverbs. So we first we look at the sample adverb of the school product of group point. And then we use our results, we we add, we apply our results to sorry to the level pass adverbs and the Kumian pass adverbs. And we can obtain the presentation of the graded monoid for the level pass adverb and Kumian pass adverbs. And the last part, we will use a special invariant subset of the group point uh, to conduct graded models for the sample adverb. OK, so first of all, we use the of group point. So it has a comparison, which is, this is a partial binary operation, and it has an inverse map. And we use dx to denote x inverse x. We call it the domain of this element x. And the range x is x, x inverse. G0 is the unit space of the group by G. So we uh, consider, we just consider the ample host of group point. So let's, and gamma denotes a decreed group. C is the 
is a continuous co cycle, R is a community remix unit. So we, we learned that the sample algebra is R span of this characteristic function on U. This U is completely open by sex and all. And this algebra was introduced in these two papers. Okay, we already learned this yesterday. So let's see. First, we call which is graded ring. First, the array, it is called gamma graded ring if it has this decomposition. And uh, each component is the active subgroup of A. And it satisfies this relation. We call the non zero elements of uh, the com this component. Oh, the, the non zero elements of this component are called homogeneous of a degree gamma. Give us any element in this graded algebra A, we can write, we write S gamma for the unique elements S gamma in this gamma's component. So such that S is this stuff. Yeah, so here we pick element S because here uh, in A, because A is this double sum, so we can write S as this sum. So such that this S gamma is a unique element of a degree gamma. And here is unique because here this is direct result. So if give us an algebra A over a ring R, A is called graded algebra if A is a, a graded ring and uh, each component is an R sub model of A. So for let's see our sample algebra. We, we have this cosigo and uh, this cosigo gives this sample algebra of reading. Such that the gamma component contains these functions. Such that if f x is non zero, then x is in this C inverse gamma. Well now we give the definition for the smash product. Let A be a gamma grid ring, possibly without a unit. Then the smash product we did not by A has gamma. It is contains these kinds of elements. Here, for for each gamma in this group, we have R gamma. This is an element in the grid ring. And P gamma are symbols. So here, this is we only have finite many R gamma non zero. The addition for this ring is component wise. Multiplication is given by this rule. So let us take two elements. Uh, one is R P alpha. So alpha is an element in this group of gamma. I is an element in the grid ring A. S is an element in the grid ring A. Beta is an element in, in gamma. So we take these elements, the multiplication by this. So here, let's see. S alpha beta inverse. It is the homogeneous part of S, which is of a degree alpha beta inverse. Yeah, so remember, we have given us any elements in the graded ring A. So S is in A. We have this. So S we can have this sum for S gamma. So here that S alpha beta inverse is the homogeneous part of a degree alpha beta inverse. We can clearly detect that this is a ring, and in fact it is always a gamma graded ring. The gradient is given by the gradient of A. So now let's recall some definition for grid models. First, though, we give us a, a model M. It is called unit model if AM is M. And we use this to denote the category of a unit of that A models. Yeah, usually, for, if A is a ring with unit, then this is the who the category of all the A models. But here, we because our ring may be uh, without unit. So 
we just can do the, the unit models. Let A be a gamma Granger ring, then a left A model is called gamma gradient. If there, if this model has a decomposition, and then the A can satisfy this. So for the grid case, we use this A grid A G R to denote the category of gamma gradient unit of A models, and the morphisms. The morphisms in this category preserve the gradient. So now let's uh, see the definition of screw product uh, group white. So suppose G is an ample host of group white. <laughs> Gamma is a discrete group. And we have this co cycle from G to gamma. Then the screw product of G by gamma is this. Quite. First, as a set, it is uh, G times gamma. So it contains the elements uh, in this form. So for uh, X alpha in G times gamma. And here, this is the comparison. And this is the inverse. Now we have this comparison and the inverse, so we can uh, calculate the domain and the range. So let's see the. So uh, let's first give a picture for for each element in the super product G times gamma. So what we have y beta. So we. This is y beta. Its domain is dy. And beta, and its source is the range of y, and here is the c y beta. So give us a, another object uh, x alpha. So we know that its source is uh, c x alpha. Its range is range x c x. Alpha. So the so these two objects is uh, are compatible if and only if this range is equal to this the domain of this one. So this is the <coughs> this formula here. So since T has a we have a cycle from T to gamma, so we have an induced cycle from this school product group by the two gamma. So in fact, it's given, given by the first coordinate. So here, we, this group by G is ample host of. In fact, we can prove that this school product group by the G times gamma is also an ample host of group by So here is our result. So suppose G is an ample host of group white with a continuous cycle and I a commuter ring with unit. Then we have that the this stem algebra of the school product of group white is isomorphic to the smash product. So let's recall that this smash product is uh, here the isomorphism are graded. So first we recall that the smash product has a gradient which is induced uh, uh, by the gradient of this stem algebra of T. And uh, this screw product has an induced co-cycle. So this stem algebra has a gradient. So you have for the for this for each compact open bisection in U of T and any alpha in the group gamma, this function is mapped to 1 U P alpha. So here for the proof for this isomorphism, in fact, we first we can de define a map, a homomorphism from the stem algebra of the screw product to this smash product. 
and we define a representation in this smart product. Then we prove that it's uh, inductive and subjective. Then the second part, we, we have this uh, isomorphism between these cat two categories. So the left is the unitary models of this over this algebra, and this is the unitary gradient models for the standard algebra. So in fact, for uh, to obtain the, the, the second result, we can have a more general result. So for any uh, gradient uh, ring A with gradient local units, we can have this as a model. So here, what, what is the gradient ring with gradient local units? So that means for any finite of homogeneous elements, see x1, x2, xn, there exists the, a homogeneous other model. E in A such that E X I is X I B is X I. So we know that uh, that uh, uh, ordinary we has uh, local units. That means we just uh, we can say for any finite elements there exists other components. But here we we assume that they, they should. Uh, contain home, there should exist the homogeneous other component set for this. In fact, for this, uh, in these two papers, they already consider the categories. Uh, they already consider these two categories. They can, in the first paper, they consider the, uh, the ring with unit, the greater ring with unit, and the graph, uh, and the this gamma in this paper is finite group, a finite group, and in this paper they consider the uh, unit ring. Uh, they consider unit ring, but the group can be infinite. Okay, so then now we will use the, our result to uh, get the presentation of the gradient of monoid for the level pass algebra. So let's first we call that we know that level pass algebra can be realized as standard algebra. So here our notation uh, is a little uh, different. So here for any direct graph in E, we use E star to denote the set of finite paths in E, and E infinity to denote the set of infinite paths in E. So here our x really contains E infinity and the finite pass mu such that the range is not a regular vertex. So that means the range of a mu is either a sink or an infinite meter. So here we use the comparison for pass from left to right. So we use u1, e2. So that means the range of we find in this way. The range of u1 is the source of e2. Okay, we know that the group of the TE consists of these triples. So here our beta of bottom plus x is uh, an element in x. So here we, the range of alpha is the range of beta. And they are equal to the source of x. So, so for a triple here, alpha x, beta y, so that means we, we did this way. This is alpha beta and this is x in x. And here are the comparison and the inverse maps for this group part. And in this paper, Clark and Six, they uh, proved that, that the left path algebra is graded as more to this than we are. Okay, here let's uh, give a definition for carving graph. So, first, the, giving us a graph E. And W is a function from E1 to gamma. The current graph E bars is given by this. It contains vertex with alpha for any V in E0 and alpha in gamma. 
for the areas, we look in this, all the areas we are. If E is the angle in E1, and alpha is the angle between gamma. And here we give you the source and the range. So basically, this part graph is a gamma copies of the graph E. In fact, in these two papers, we consider the current graphs and they consider the uh, models of the the models over the current uh, over the algebra of the current graph and uh, the bridge models of the uh, algebra for the original graph. Here, let's see an example. So suppose E is this graph. So it has two vertices and three edges. Let's give a function w is from e1 to z such that for each for edge e the value is y. So now we have the current graph e bar. So for first of all, any vertex in this graph e we have copies. We have z copies. The p r number is z. So we have U0, U minus 1, U minus 2, and so on. And also for the left side, we have U1, U2, and so on. Similar for V0. So there are the copies for the vertex in V. And let's see the edge. So for each edge, suppose, let's see, uh, first let's see this edge. Okay, let's first see the loop. E. It's from U to U. So we have because we have E from U to U, such that in the current graph we have EN. So here N is any integer in Z. We have EN is from UN to UN minus 1. So here this is the source of EN is UN. The range is UN minus 1. So we take N is 0, then we have this. E0 is from U0 to U minus 1. So for N is minus 1, it's from U minus 1 to U minus 2. So we have so many edges. They call these edges here. So for F, it's similar. F is uh, the source of U, the range is V. So we have F0 from U0 to V minus 1, and F minus 1 from U minus 1 to V minus 2, and so on. And for the F G similar. Well, see the source is V, the range is U, so we have this. G zero is from V zero to U minus one, and G minus one is from V minus one to U minus two. So we we have the result that the lambda path algebra of this current graph is isomorphic to this SMAP product. So in fact, we, we, uh, to obtain this isomorphism, we use the isomorphism between the level path algebra and the SMAP algebra. So first, for the level path algebra of E bar, we have that it's isomorphic to the SMAP algebra for D E, uh, e bar. In fact, Kumya and Pascal, they, they already put that this required for E bar is isomorphic to GE plus gamma. Here is the screw product of the point. Okay, here is our function example. So, for, so this standard algebra is isomorphic to the A, G, E. So by our result, we know that the stem algebra of this super product is isomorphic to the smash product. And we know that the stem algebra of GE is isomorphic to the level pass algebra. So we can get the induced isomorphism between this smash product rings. So this is all asymorphism, so we go to this is asymorphism. And uh, all are graded asymorphisms. So this is graded asymorphism.
Okay, now we will use the what we we will use this as a mechanism and uh, our result in the theorem to get the presentation of the grid monoid for the level pass algebra. So now first let's record the monoid for the grid algebras. Let A be a gamma uh, a gamma grid ring with unit. Then the VGRA contains the asymorphic classes of a graded finite generator protective in models. So this VGRA is a monoid with the direct sum as addition. For a non unit of graded ring A, we first uh, we first uh, get a unit relation ring Z times A. So this unit relation ring is Z times A. The addition is pointwise. The multiplication is given by this. So this is natural. And uh, here this grid, this ring A is graded. We can have that the A tuta is also gamma graded. The grading is given like this. This is the zeros component. This is the gamma component. So here we we direct the note this step. It contains the asymorphic classes of a graded finite generated project of A tuta model. Such that A P is this is also a monoid or uh, what direct sum. So we we can find this in Professor Harris' book. So now let's recall the monoid for an arbitrary graph E. We know that uh, in the first paper, Professors Oran and Miranda Paolo, they, uh, can, they conduct uh, the monoid ME for those final graphs. And in fact, uh, later in this, uh, in this paper, uh, they considered as a level pass algebra of separated graphs. The non separated uh, uh, graph give us the normal level pass algebra and it tends this result the result in the first paper to an arbitrary graph E. And also we can find the um monoid and E for an arbitrary graph in this paper. So here let's see. We know that for for if E is a fi is a final graph and E is has generators <coughs> All the vertices are the generation for ME, and it has relations for the for this relation. So here, for an arbitrary graph E, ME has more generators. So it has the the all the vertices are generators, but we also have these generators QZ. Here, Z is any non empty finite subset of S inverse U. Here, this U is any infinite metric in the graph. So we have more than just here, and also we have uh, two more relations here. So this is for infinity meters, and here we have z1, z2, they are non empty finite subset of S inverse V, where V is an infinity meter. Okay, we may use this. The monoid for an arbitrary graph M E, and to get the monoid for the grid, uh, to get the grid monoid for the level pass algebra. So now we use the isomorphism we obtain. So this is uh, the second part of our theorem. So we we have this isomorphism between these categories. We use this. We can deduce the presentation for the monoid for the level pass algebra. So here is our proposition. Let me be an arbitrary graph. K is a field, gamma is a group, and W is the weak function. 
Then we have that uh, this uh, grid monoid of level pass library is isomorphic to the monoid of the level pass library of the coupling graph in Eva. So we know that um, we know that we have this this monoid M E bar is isomorphic to the monoid of this level pass library. So here we know the presentation for this monoid for this grid monoid. Using the proper reason, we can have this relax. So for any graph E, we now we can say the level path algebra is a, a Z gradient, uh, is a regraded algebra. So the gradient is given by the length of path. So in this case, we have that this monoid, the gradient monoid for level path algebra is cancelled. And also we can have a one-to-one -one correspondence between the admissible pairs of a E zero and the graded ordered ideas of the graded percentage group of a level pass algebra. In fact, in Professor Hammer's paper, we um, there's a conjecture that the graded K zero um, is a complete the environment for the level pass address. So here, by our first result, we have evidence that this bridge the K0 preserves all the information of this bridge of monoid. And also from this part, we know that the grid K0, it captures all the, uh, captures the grid ideal structures for the level pass address. Yeah, remember that we know that the admissible pairs of E0 is one-to-one -one component to the graded ideas of level pass factors. Okay, so then we, similarly we can apply this result to Kuhn-Yen pass algebras. So we, we can suppose the lambda is a low final key graph without sources. And P is a field, so uh, KP lambda denotes the Kuhn-Yen pass algebra lambda. So here we didn't give the details. Uh, here we have these papers you know, consider about the Kuhn-Yen pass algebra of a K graph. And also for a K graph, we can have a current graph lambda in bar. So it's given by this. We have the degree map. It is induced by the degree map of lambda. And we have the range, source, and the multiplication here. So similar as the result of level pass algebra, we can prove, we can have this result. First, the, the Kuhn-Yen pass algebra of the current graph is the smash product. And the second, we can prove that the Kuhn-Yen pass algebra of lambda is graded volume and regular. So for this, we can we prove that this Kuhn-Yen pass algebra is uh, atomatical. Then we use this. We can show that this is graded volume and regularly. And also the graded monoid is casualty. Okay, the first, uh, the last part we will. Uh, give the graded representations for the Stanford algebras. So now let's let's give some notations. First, the T is the ample for the group point, and we suppose gamma is a discrete group with identity, with union with the identity. And C is a continuous cycle from T to gamma. So let's recall that a subset of the unit space of D is called invariant. If uh, the domain of the element gamma is in U, implies the range is in U. So that means uh, we have this uh, formula. So that means that the saturation of U is itself. So for uh, Element in the unit space of D, we we, we let the bracket U 
be the smallest environment subset of G0, uh, which contains U. So that means this uh, smallest environment set is, is the saturation of U. We call this U, uh, this bracket U, an environment orbit. So now let's recall what's the astrophobic group at the unit U. So it is the group such that it contains all the elements gamma in the group G, the, dom uh, the domain and the range are U. A unit uh, element in G is called uh, gamma periodic if the astrophobic group of U is contained in the Contained in C inverse U. So, um, so we have our cosine C from G to gamma. And here we know that U is the identity. So we have a C inverse U, which is contained in the group of D. So an uh, element is called uh, gamma periodic if its astrophobic group is contained in this part. If this is not satisfied, so we will call you gamma periodic. In fact, we, later we want to use this environment uh, uh, a periodic subset to conduct a graded models of the standard attribute. Okay, I, I should first attribute the definition for the a periodic environment subset. So let's uh, you, uh, let W be an environment subset of G0. In, now we can give W a disjoint unit. So WAP it contains all the um, a gamma appearing elements in W. And WP it contains all the periodic elements in W. So this is a disjoint unit. So if W is WAP, we will call it uh, a periodical because all the elements inside the W is uh, a periodic. And uh, if W is WP, we will call it uh, a periodic. Yeah, all the elements in W are periodic. In fact, uh, for any environment subset W, these two parts are both environment subsets of G0. Let's have a, a proof for this. So we suppose that we have a U in WAP. And we have U is the domain of element X. So that means we have X. So this is U, this is this is the range, we denote the range by V. So if we, we need to prove that if U is in WP, we need to first we saw that V should be in WP. So we suppose that uh, there exists uh, an element in the isotopic group of V such that the C way is not the identity element of U. Suppose that, but remember here we have X. So we have, a, in fact, we can get an element in the isotropic group of U. So that is, uh, first we, we go X, then we go and use Y, but we can go back. So we have X inverse. So this is, go this way and this way, and we go back. So this is in the isotropic group of U. So now let's see C X inverse Y X. We know that C is a cosine, so it's C X inverse C Y C X. We suppose C Y is not identity, then we can show that this is not identity because we know that this is in the group gamma. So this is a contradiction to, to here, U is an appearance. So we get that uh, this V is a periodical.
But we know that uh, U is already contained in W. W is invariant, so the range is already contained in W. So, so we have the range, so the range that is V is in the appearance of part of W. Okay, so now we put that, that uh, this W in T is invariant. So the upper, because this is this one, U in and W is uh, environment, so this the other part is also environment. So let's see what's a pure motive. So let's get back to the graph case. Because E is a direct graph, and C is uh, the cosine from D to Z. So that is giving us a a triple x and y, c x and y is f. This is the integer in z. An element in the unit space is z a periodic if and only if the isotropic group of x is x. This is the by definition. So here we periodic a periodic that means. Uh, if we have an element x, k, y in z, e, the source, okay, sorry, is in isotropic group of x. Uh, let me see if I use another one, y and z. So that means the source and the range should be both x. So we have y and z are both x. And a period would that mean that uh, the c, x, k, x, if this is k, should be 0. 0 is the identity of the group z. So that means, <coughs> so that means x in z, e, 0 is uh, a periodic. By definition, if and only if the other topic group will just consist this element x. Then let's see that as uh, x is the other topic group of x is x if and only if x is not this kind of pass mu lambda infinity for for any cross pass lambda in <coughs> So for this if and only, let's so <coughs> Okay, let's prove for, for this way. <coughs> so we suppose we have the isotropic group uh, x is x. We need to so x is not the, that way. We suppose x is mu lambda infinity. Here lambda is a closed uh, Pass in e. Then we can find uh, we know that this is x is mu lambda infinity, so we can let's let's write a triple mu lambda infinity. In fact, we we need to put an integer here, but because this is mu lambda infinity, we, we can write it as mu lambda and lambda infinity. Then so here we remember here this is the length of mu minus the length of mu mu lambda. So this is non-zero. So that means the, the isotropic group of x is not x. This is a contradiction here. So so if x the isotropic group of x is x, then we have x cannot be in this form. So the other way, suppose x is not in this form, we need to prove the isotropic group just contains x. So the isotropic group, we suppose x, sorry, oh yeah, this should be x, k, x is in the isotropic group x. Then we need to show that k must be 0. So if k is, we suppose k is non-zero. 
So let me remember we this is the triple, so we, we can write it as mu x prime. So x is v x prime. So this is the triple in the group D here. So we we uh, we discuss in two cases. If x is a, a finite class. Then here, x should be u x prime and v x prime. And we by the length, we can know that this is x prime, so u must be the same as v. So k must be there. So k must be there. OK, or, or maybe we, we consider this way. We just we suppose x is the final class, we can deduce that k zero. So now the anthropic group it just contains one element x. If x is infinite, infinite pass. So we suppose now we suppose k is non-zero. We need to have a, a contradiction. So now let's see it here. We uh, x is mu x prime, x is v x prime. So we can have a picture here. This is mu, and we have x prime in x. And we also have v, this uh, v, so maybe I'm not v, this v, v is this part. So now, because x is uh, the range of mu is the, the same as the range of v, so we have that the range of mu, this is range of mu, the range of v, they are the same. So here we have a closed path lambda. And we, we remember this this part is x prime, and also this is with this is x prime. So here this we have a cross path lambda. So here this part is also lambda. So we can continue. We can prove that x prime x it can be written as mu lambda infinity. We can continue this. So this is the contradiction to here. So such we prove that k must be zero, and so the asymptotic group just contains one element. In fact, this kind of pass, this kind of infinite path x is called a resonance. So here we already proved that an x is a, a z a periodical element only if x is irrational. So in, the, in this paper, Professor Haran and Ramaswamy they uh, used the irrational path can uh, conduct a graded uh, models over level path algebras. So in spite of this result, we want to to consider the, a periodic uh, environment subsets of uh, the group point. We want to construct a graded uh, models for the sample algebras. So here, let's recall, given us an invariant subset U, we can get a model for the sample algebra. So suppose here, R is a community ring with unit. R U is a free R model with basis U. Then we have this function. For any compact open bus X and B in the group of D, we have a function FB. This function is given like this. So give us this function FB is from C0 to RU. So give us any element U. So we need to send it here. In fact, this like this. We the domain of this range is uh, the domain of this map F B is contained in the domain of B in the system of U. So that is, if U is in the environment subset U, and U is a domain for some element in B. So suppose we have some element B in the given compact open bisection B. 
So that means U is the domain for this L and B in the giving compact open bus X and B. Then we will send this U to the range of that B. So here, because our U is the environment, and the source, the source of the B is contained in U, so the range must be in U. So here the range is in U, so it's here. Yes, so this is the function at B. So the function is well defined that because B is a bisection. So for N, for U, there only exists one B in the compact open bisection B. So we can just send it to the range. So while this map at B, we can get a unique representation from this standard word to the endomorphism of R U. So the is pi U. This pi U is given by this F B. So even in this paper they prove that they construct this and prove that this is this function makes the R U a model over this stem gap. Okay, here, uh, give us a environment subset of D0. We have this uh, result that U is a gamma appearable to orbit if and only if R U is a graded, basic, simple model over this stem gap. So here we have a basic that because here R is a community ring with unit. If it's field, it's so here we will say it's uh, R U is graded simple over the sample gap. So here we need here the uh, environment subject U is a periodical. We use this, we need to give this model agree and then conclude that it's a agreed model. Okay, now we apply this result with the cycle is from D to the trivial group. We can have this result. So for D is an ample hostile group wide. U is an invariant subset of D0. Then U is an orbit of D0, if and only if this model is basic simple model. So if K is a, okay, so here if R, R is a field of K, so here this results is that U is an orbit of D0, if and only if KU is a simple model over this stem value. Okay, so now let's get back to the uh, graph case. So suppose T is an infinite path in the graph E. And we know that we have the group point D E. And this infinite path is an element in the unit space of D E. So in the group point setting, this infinite path P is an element here. And, uh, and we know that this, uh, the R infinite path, another infinite path Q belongs to the orbit. If and only if Q is equivalent, T equivalent to P. So we remember that uh, in this paper, Professor Singh, he conducts a um, simple model with P. So he used this equation plus P, and he considered here, this is, he considered the T equivalent class of P. And so they, they got VT, and he proved that this is an irreducible representation for level pass algebra. That means it's a simple model of level pass algebra. So here, in our case, here we, we know that this orbit of P is exactly the T equivalence class of P. So using our corollary, we can um, immediately get that this is a simple model of level pass algebra. Okay, this is all. Thank you.